Hello everyone and welcome to the next session of Darsim Simulator Tutorial Series. If you have not watched the previous sessions, uh, please go and do so as you need those informations in order to continue with the, with the series of tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run fractured test cases using EDFM Embedded Discrete Fracture Model and PEDFM or Projection Based Embedded Discrete Fracture Model and uh, using some preset fracture networks that uh, was created using uh, the fracture generator uh, part of Darsim simulator and I will try to cover the information about the fracture generator in another video if time allows but for now you will have a preset a fractured networks that was prepared for you for all the fracture test cases in this session, we use a 2D square shaped model with the length of 100 meters and the width of 100 meters. We discretize this system into 136 by 136 grid cells, in total about 18,500 grid cells. And then we add the fracture networks to this model. We use a line drive well pattern model for this purpose and we use an injection well that perforates all the grid cells in the most left column and we use a production well that perforates all the grid cells in the most right column we inject with the pressure of 500 bar and we produce with the pressure of 100 bar and we will simulate a two-phase water flooding so on your browser please go to the example repository of the Darsim GitLab the, the address is gitlab.com slash Darsim slash examples go to the multi-scale course and then you will see a folder called fractured fine scale I want you to download all the contents of this folder using the download button you can use a zipped version to download all of the folders in one go if you go there you will see that there are two folders one with test cases that have a two fractures as cross shaped in the middle and another test case that has many more fractures about 30 fractures in that 2d domain i have already downloaded them so the folder looks like more or less like this the two fractures cross shape if you go in it you'll see that there are three folders because there are three different test cases that i want you to run but before that let's have a look at how the network of fracture look like you have two fractures right in the middle one completely horizontal and one completely vertical and the the length of each fracture is about half of the size of the length or width of the domain now if you go to the other folder with 30 fractures you can also see an image that shows you the fracture network of these test case you see that there are 30 fractures with different orientations and these fractures by the way have different conductivity or permeability range some of these fractures are flow barriers actually so they have they are impermeable and some of these fractures have high permeability so they are highly conductive and act as flow channels now I want you to go as first step into two fractures cross shape folder and then the first test case that we are going to run is EDFM test case with both fractures being highly permeable so EDFM high perm I want you to open the main input file immiscible.txt there is basically no difference between the test case the input file of the test case that we ran in the first run in the Darsim tutorial video series and this one there is no difference the only difference is first the well configuration that now we have the line drive that I mentioned so the injection well perforates all the cells in the first column from the beginning to the end and also the production well perforates all the cells to the last column again from the bottom to top now you will see a new keyword capital letters of 
fractured. When you add this keyword, you need to either mention whether it is on in capital letters or it is off. If it's off, there would be there will be no fractures involved in the simulation. So simulator will not use the fractured network that you have added as a file. When you mention this as capital on underneath it you have to give the full name of the fracture network file now this fracture network file you can also see here has been created by the fracture generator of darsim simulator in this video we will not go in the details of what the fracture generator does or how it works but I will open this file for you so you can see how this file looks like. In this file, which you don't have to worry about the name of the keywords, these are just the keywords that will be detected and read by the Darsim simulator itself. But it's mentioned that the fracture model type is EDFN. We are using Cartesian grid geometry. It's the dimension of the reservoir it's mentioned it is very important that the dimension that you mention in the main input file here matches the dimension of the reservoir in the in the fracture file which we have already taken care of that so you don't have to worry also the grid discretization of the reservoir reservoir grid should also match this is 136 by 136 by 1 so it's a 2d discretization and it matches with the discretization here so the number of all the grid cells in the reservoir is 18,496 you also see how many fractures you have in your system and how many grid cells all these fractures in total have at the bottom you also see the fracture properties the length width the aperture porosity permeability in the square meters the greeting discretization of the fracture so this is a 1d fracture 55 grid cells in total some other configuration that at this point in time are not important for us also all the coordination of all the fracture grid cells in x y and z and here you see all the connections and connectivities between every fracture cells in this fracture fracture zero or actually the first fracture and all the grid cells in the reservoir or as we call it the matrix so this is basically the list of all the conductivities that Darsim simulator will read we just crossed from fracture one to fracture two now these are the information of the second fracture the index is one this is a c plus plus indexing but this is actually the second fracture so again the list of all the conductivities that every fracture element in the second fracture has with the reservoir or any other possible overlapping fracture in the system so let us close this file we do not want to modify anything here and the simulator setting is not different than the first one that we have in the first tutorial now i want you to open matlab and run this simulation copy the entire full path of the input folder go to matlab as same as before dar sim res sim open parenthesis close and we give two strings at it as input argument the first one is the full path of the input folder of the simulations the second one is the full name of the main simulation input file and then hit run before i hit run the simulation will run for 200 days i will pause the video and i will get back to you when the simulation is run and finished before i pause while the simulation is running i can show you some information about so here you can see that it says that the fracture file is reading is being read there are two fractures in total 110 grid cells each fracture has 55 grid cells 
and the rest of the information as in the every time step the iteration loops the norm of the residual the norm of the solution and the size of the time step and going to the next time step i am now pausing the video and i wait till the simulation is finished okay the simulation is finished now i want you to go back to the folder and open the output directory then go to the vtk now you will see that for every report or time step i want to call this report for every report you have one file for fracture number one you have one file for fracture number two and you have one file for the reservoir itself so in this case in this video that we have 100 time steps including the initial state will be 101 we have in total 303 vtk files which is 101 files for fraction number one 101 files for fraction number two and 101 file for the reservoir and we have two vtk files that are not the focus of our attention at this point in time now we want to visualize the result please open the power view and navigate to the path of this vtk folder i will copy the path that will be easier press open paste the path and then press navigate now i want you to open the group of vtk files for the reservoir hold your control button on keyboard and then using your left click on mouse you can choose other vtk groups as well so reservoir fracture one and fracture two press ok then press apply now you're able to see that you have a reservoir and you have two fractures first click on the reservoir and click on surface and pressure you can change the color bar here to jet optional you don't have to now go and click on the first fracture choose wireframe so you're able to see the fracture in a vertical manner as as a bird's eye view this is the wireframe you can increase the width of the line of the wireframe i will usually choose three or five let's choose five now and press enter now you see that the fracture is thicker so it is more uh, visible for you also choose the property p1 or pressure for your fracture go to the second fracture and do the same wireframe make the line with five or your desired width press enter and choose the property p1 now the next step i want you to go here click on this option which we scale the color map across all the time steps we scale and disable automatic rescaling now we see that the pressure is from 200 bar to 350 bar now I want you to go and click on this so you're able to see the pressure at the next time step. This is the pressure that you have. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not probably click on the correct I see what happened. So I want you to be on the immiscible reservoir file and then click on this button. Then it rescales the pressure color map across all the time steps in the correct value. Now we have done that and now the pressure is actually from 100 bar to 500 bar. Now you can go to the next time step, next time step, next time step. Now you can see that as you can also press play and dynamically see how pressure changes across the all the time steps going back to the initial state and the first time step so you see how the pressure map is changed due to the existence of two highly conductive fractures in the middle 
This is using embedded discrete fracture modeling approach. Now I want you to go and change to saturation of the phase one or S1. You can also again go and press this icon and choose the jet color map. This is my preference. You don't have to do that. Please go and select for both fractures the same property S1 or saturation of phase one. Also for the next fracture, saturation of phase one. Now, this is the first report. If you click, you'll see the second report, third report, fourth report. You can also press play dynamically to see how the fracture, how the saturation front passes and goes to the front due to the existence of the fracture. Now I want you to go back to the simulation input folders and go to this folder, PEDFM Hyperm. I want you to run this test case now. In this test case, the only difference that you see, there's, there's no difference in emissible or simulator settings TXT file. The only difference is another factor output file that is added here. This factor output file is generated using PEDFM or projection based embedded discrete fracture modeling approach. Due to the to do this approach, you have more connectivities and modified connectivities across all the reservoir. And the difference between EDFM and PDFM will be explained to you during the course itself. Now, I want you to go to MATLAB. I want you to Copy the entire path to this simulation input folder and run this test case. Again, two input arguments, strings. The first one is the full path to the input folder. So PDFM hyper. And again, I copy the full name of the main input file and paste it here and I hit enter and I will till the simulation is finished and I'll get back to you once it's done okay now that the simulation is finished I want you to go to the power view and visualize the result of this test case by the way you don't have to use the same window from power view you can use another uh, session or instance of power view and another hint is that you can change the name of the title of the PowerView window using edit and rename window. So this was EDFM high parent. So I'm just naming it. Now I open another PowerView. I go to the path of the VTK folder inside this test case I copy the full path open paste navigate choose the reservoir and the two fractures press apply choose surface for reservoir pressure color bar jet apply close I choose the fracture wireframe width of 5 enter pressure the same for the second fracture wireframe the long width of five enter and p1 and again i choose immiscible reservoir and then click on this icon to rescale the data range over all the time steps now the pressure from only 200 bar will now be rescaled from 100 bar to 500 bar so the first time step this is what you get if you play you can see the pressure across all the time steps now stop initialize or the initial uh, uh, condition or time step zero again choose reservoir now this time s1 or saturation press the this icon change to jet 
close do the same for fracture s1 we don't have to change the the type of the color map for all the medias reservoir and all the fractures once you do it for one it will be done automatically for the rest fracture one also fracture two s1 go back on reservoir click on the rescaling of the data range over all the time steps rescale data so from zero to almost zero is changed now to zero to one now this is the next time step 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 you can also press and check the animation and see the animation of the uh, movement of saturation front across all the time steps from left to right you can see now how the the fracture changes the pattern of the saturation front now the horizontal fracture is a fracture that is on the direction of the pressure gradient so it is the influential fracture on the pattern of the saturation front the vertical fracture does not influence at this point the the highly permeable vertical fracture does not influence the pattern of the saturation front now I want you to go back and now this time I want you to run this test case PDFM but low perm now again the only difference between this test case and the previous one is the fracture file this fracture file was created using the fracture generator and this time not only we use projection based based embedded discrete fracture model now these fractures have much lower permeability so they are actually flow barriers with permeabilities of 10 to the power of minus 22 both fractures are impermeable with the permeability of 10 minus 22 square meter you are approximately or uh, more or less impermeable region now let's close all these files i want you to go and run this test case copy the full path door seam res seam the input arguments the first one is the full path the second one is the full name of the main input file control c copy control v paste and press enter i'll pause the video when the simulation finishes i'll get back to you the simulation of this test case is also done again you can go and keep the power view window open you can rename the window this was PEDFM high perm now I can open another power view window And now this time I want to visualize the result of this test case I'll make sure that I copy the path to this folder open paste navigate I'll choose the reservoir and the two fractures press ok apply the same procedure surface p1 color map jet apply fracture wireframe line with 5 enter p1 wireframe line with 5 enter and p1 you go back on the reservoir part click this icon to scale the color map across all the time steps between 100 bar to 500 bar now on the next time step this is what you will see as the pressure profile when you have two fractures to be uh, impermeable now you will see that this time the fracture that is vert vertical or perpendicular to the direction of the flow creates a huge pressure drop between left to the right side which makes sense because it's against the flow it's a flow barrier therefore it creates a huge pressure drop when flow is happening from left to right now I can go to the next time step next time step next time step 
and I can also press play to see the animation of the change of the pressure profile now I want you to go back to the initial state I want you to go and change it to saturation of phase one change the color map to jet go on the fracture choose S1 you don't have to change the color map anymore second fracture S1 go back on reservoir click on this icon to rescale and uh, on all across all the time steps now now you have saturation between 0 to 1 now this is the first time step second time step third time step you can also play and see the animation and you will see that due to the existing existence of this flow barrier the flow tends to go around it as there is no way for flow to happen from left to right across this flow barrier and this is what you see now using embedded discrete fracture modeling approach we will not be able to see such a result because embedded discrete fracture model or edfm lacks the capability to capture the influence of the fractures that are flow barriers uh, edfm only works when the fractures are highly conductive due to the existence of the parallel connectivities in the implementation of that model now i want you to go back we can also by the way rename this as well rename window pedfm low term however now i want you to close all the windows we don't need them anymore and i want you to go to the 30 fractures pdf and folder we want to run this test case now the difference between this test case and the previous test cases is that there are 30 fractures randomly placed at different locations some of these fractures are highly conductive some of them are flow barriers so there is a mixed conductivity involved in this fracture network now the only difference in the files also is only this fracture file now if you open that you'll see that this fracture file was created from the fracture generator using the projection based embedded discrete fracture modeling approach same dimension same number of grid cells in the reservoir but this time you have 30 fractures and it in total all these 30 fractures have 948 grid cells some of these fractures are low conductive or impermeable using the permeability of 10 minus 20 do we can also go through all the all the fractures to see what permeability they have you can copy this keyword and go and find and replace so control f and you can paste permeability and you can see the second fracture this fracture the second fracture or fracture with id1 starting from zero is highly conductive 10 minus 6 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 fracture id7 which is the eighth fracture is low conductive or flow barrier next as well the next as well the next one is highly conductive and so on you don't want to scroll over all the fractures now i want you to go to matlab copy the path of this simulation input folder dar sim res sim and you give again two input argument the first one being the path of the simulation input folder and the second is the full name of the main input file paste press enter you'll see that the simulator first scans the fracture file it then gives you a list of all the fractures with different grid cells in this case the fractures all have 28 uh, grid cells some fractures have higher number of grid cells this is the the reason that you see that the grid cells in the fractures are more or less the same is because of the multi-scale settings that was initially activated which is not a concern 
we have some fractures that are small enough to have 28 grid cells some fractures are bigger and have 55 grid cells this is because of the coarsening ratios in the initial uh, multi-scale uh, settings which is not important for us at this time and then the simulation starts running i'm gonna pause the video and we'll get back to you when the simulation is finished okay now that the simulation is done we want to visualize the result now if you go to the output folder that we created in the VTK, you will see that in total about m more than 3,000 files. The reason for that is that you have 30 fractures, each have 101 VTK files. For the reservoir itself, 101 VTK files. If you multiply them, it makes sense. Now, open Paraview and go to the path either navigate or like me copy paste the VTK folder path in the Paraview window browsing window and press navigate now you see that there are 30 groups of fracture files and there is one group of reservoir so what you can do you can basically choose all of them you can either hold the shift button on your keyboard and then right click on the last so all of them will be selected press ok and press apply if you see that the the, the video the, the uh, window of paraview shows you a deformed or unadjusted size of this test case you can easily fix that by clicking on this button this is like the bird's eye view and shows you the proper scale of the entire domain in one go now i want you to go and choose the reservoir first surface and then p1 go to the select of the color map icon and choose jet close now I want you to select the fracture one now one thing that you need to know is that the Paraview selection window is not user friendly so in order to change all the fractures to wireframe and then pressure and then change the thickness of the line you have to do them one by one and for 30 fractures or imagine you have 100 fractures in your system that would not be a feasible option not efficient but what you can do you can group all the fractures into one group item the how you can do that is that you click fracture one hold the shift scroll down all the way to the end fracture and hold the shift button so all the fractures are selected now you can see all the fractures are selected right click on any of them add filter common group data sets press apply now you see that underneath every fracture there is this group data sets one filtering that means all the fractures are now linked into one group now instead of changing the settings in the fracture you can change the settings in the group data sets now click on the group data sets choose wireframe now you see all the fractures are now in wireframe choose p1 so pressure you can change the line width from 1 to 5 press enter if you think it's too much you can reduce it to 3 or 4 whatever you desire now again scroll down all the way and choose emissible reservoir click on the icon that rescales the color map across all the time steps and all the media now you see that the pressure is from 100 bar to 500 bar now the initial state the pressure was 200 bar in the system if you click to see the first time step this is your pressure profile now if you click the next time step the next time step the next time step and you can basically go and see the pressure across all the time steps now I want you to go back in the initial state and for the reservoir click 
and choose S1 or saturation of phase one. Go here and call, choose the jet as color map. Click on this icon to rescale the color map across all the time cell for saturation from zero to one. Click any of the group data sets, doesn't matter which one. Instead of P1, choose S1. Now for fractures, we also have S1. Now if you go to the next time step, this is the first report or the first two days of simulation. And don't forget that we are injecting as a line drive across all the grid cells in the most left column. And this is the second time step, third time step, fourth time step. We can also click on play and see the change of saturation across all the time steps. If you see that some fracture appears on the previous one, these are the artifacts of Paraview. Now, the simulation is finished. Now, if you want to have a quarter of five spot, well pattern instead of a line drawing so you put one injection here one production here you can easily change that by going to the immiscible folder oh this is not the file close all the files that are you don't use anymore go back to the 30 fractures open the main input file scroll down you can choose it by you can change it by using one one in i or x direction one one in y direction also here nx nx ny ny you can now save you can go back on matlab again dar sim res sim give the main full path of the simulation input folder the full name of the main input file and press enter now the simulation will run and I will be back when the simulation is finished now that the simulation is finished go back to Paraview you can actually delete all the data with choosing one press ctrl a and then delete now press open and open all the fractures and the reservoir all together and press apply press this icon to scale everything into the window of the visualization scroll down Choose the reservoir, surface, S1. You see that the color map is already scaled. You don't have to change that anymore. Now you can choose all the fractures. Right click, add filter, common group data set, press apply. Now the group data set, any of them that you choose will do the job. Choose one of the group data sets, go to wireframe, S1, you can change the line width to 5 or any thickness that you would desire. Click enter. Now you can see the animation of a quarter of a 5 spot with, the, with that web pattern actually. So this is what you obtain. as saturation front with the fractures some highly conductive some flow barriers with quarter of five spot thank you for watching this video